joining us now. Good cat. He might be prez of this country somewhere down the road, if there is a down the road, after November 6th, because I'm not sure the next guy wants to be the next guy after if this cat... Obama gets four more years because it is going to be grim. Republican Senator of Kentucky, Rand Paul. He's got a new book, Government Bullies. Hey, what's up, Rand? Good morning, Dennis. Thanks for having me. Hey, man, I read a great article uh, over the weekend by Mark Stein, who's a freaking genius, and he puts forth the proposition and the fear simultaneously that we have become a nation of Sandra Flukes. I couldn't even argue with it. I, I, well, no, on November 6th, um, I know everybody plays it sort of straight-faced here, but uh, uh, this is a genuine concern to me, this election. If this man gets in with these policies and this record, I, I will know my country will have tipped. Do you ever think about that or no? Well, you know what I worry about with the Sandra Fluke thing is we've got all these people who want something for nothing, and that's bad enough, but when you get something for nothing, you got to take it from somebody, and so it's like... Hey, Mr. President, can you go to my neighbor's house and get some of his stuff and give it to me? And that's ultimately the philosophy of theft. And I tell people all the time, if your neighbor's got three cars and you have one car and you want to redistribute the cars, don't go sending the president over there to, to get one of his cars, because really that philosophy, if it breaks down, means why wait for the president? Just go break into the shop store and take what you want. Mm hmm yeah, Mark Levin always does a great thing where he says, uh, you know, go ahead, start ignoring some of these laws you don't agree with as far as them taking your stuff. He says, I guarantee you, and he's, you're going to think I sound like a militia guy or something, at the end of that sequence of events, they come to your door, and uh, and the somebody who comes to your door is armed. You know, and I'm I'm hardly one of these guys who thinks about that all the time, but when he says that, I can't argue with him. At some point, a cop does come, and a cop has, is armed, right? Well, that, that's part of what we're talking about in the book, Government Bullies. We have 38 federal agencies that are armed now. The Fish and Wildlife have SWAT teams. The Department of Education has a SWAT team. They actually send armed people looking for student loans now. Well, listen, you know, that's that startles me, but... Uh, I, I was thinking about the uh, the guitar factory, and I couldn't put it together. Was it Les Paul or Fender? Or, but what about those guys using, as they said, a bad grade of foreign wood or something? I don't know. All of a sudden, they've yeah, got guys Gibson, kicking Gibson, Gibson guitar. They actually, the Fish and Wildlife, invaded Gibson Guitar's <laughs> factory, took millions of dollars of wood and computer, never gave it back, threatened them with jail time, bullied them into submission, all for the crime, the supposed crime of breaking a foreign law a foreign labor law on where the wood should be finished. In fact, the government said to Gibson Guitar, we won't prosecute you if you'll just have the wood finished in India. It's the, the picking and the choosing is maddening. We're talking to Rand Paul, Republican Senator, Kentucky, author of Government Bullies. Bullies almost seems to be a, a, a friendly word to me in a way, because this can lapse over to something much more serious than bullies, and that's the the presumption that the they've got to get your mind right it, it it boggles my mind we're at this point have you seen this coming for years has it bothered you for years is there a way to turn back well you know one of the things that really alarms me and this is we saw this after we were mostly done with the book but it was this al armanderas the guy that was the epa agent who said you know the way i look at regulations is you do like the romans you come into a city you crucify the first four or five people first four or five businessmen and women, and you set an example, so the rest of them are beaten into submission. It's a problem that we have people with this attitude coming largely from this administration, but even before this, a lot of the rules in the bullying started even in Republican administrations. So really, it's been a bipartisan problem. The wetlands, where we now put people in jail, we have a, a woman that was in jail for seven years and her dad for ten years. He's still in jail for putting clean dirt in a low area of a development to raise the elevation. And this isn't the Everglades. We're talking about a place that doesn't have standing water except for when it rains hard. Well, I hope they, Rand, I, I hate to say this, but there will eventually be a let them eat cake moment in this country. There, there just will. I mean, they always talk about this country's roots. The, that's in the hard drive of America at some point. I hope the government realizes that uh, they're going to push people to uh, some radical means. I really believe that. 
Well, they say, you know, you run out of somebody else's money eventually. I think you also run out of somebody else's patience, you know, when we've been bullied to death. I mean, we've now got the TSA talking about sticking their, you know, their grubby fingers in our drinks at the airport. Um, it's one thing after another, and uh, the TSA is probably one I get the most complaints from, Republicans and Democrats, that your dignity when you travel. I mean, I was on uh, one of the networks this morning here in New York, and one of the producers came up, and she said she had been assaulted you know, at the airport by these exams. And it's like, all I've asked for is let you go back through the scanner. But the reason they don't want you to go through the scanner is is that most of these exams are random exams. They are not done because the machine finds anything. The machine is programmed to, to spit you out for random uh, searches. Listen, they should build an algorithm that profiles people who have been, by and large, uh, you know, uh, the places where terrorism has emanated from, homeland-wise. Yeah, I I mean, people can say that. that's uh, they can say whatever they want about me. That'd be an ugly. That's what El Al does, and it works perfectly. And when they do get the people that they find out are from homelands and of a certain age and a certain religion, a certain any of that, they talk to the guy before he even gets to the airport. Why are you traveling? All that. It just makes so much more sense than what you see at our airports on a daily basis. And I don't think it's the end of the world. I have to wait. But I do agree that it's so silly and so wasteful that we do it this way instead of just screening people who, like I sh said, uh, their, their statistics have shown a uh, predilection for terror over the years. Just seems well, to make common sense. I feel less safe because they are searching everyone. They think everyone's an equal risk because the time they're spending on the six-year-old little girl yeah, from Bowling crazy. Green, Kentucky, is time that could have been spent searching the manifest for people who have something unusual about their travel patterns or something unusual that makes them uh, a risk for uh, terrorism. And then instead of having a haystack that has a million travelers a day, we might be narrowing it down to 100 people a day that deserve more scrutiny. And we would be able to figure this out. Have them spend time looking at the flight manifest in advance, but uh, harassing everybody as they go through. We should have a frequent flyer program. That's a couple hundred thousand people who fly two and three times a week. And I'm not talking about politicians. I'm talking about businessmen and women that are all on these planes. Go ahead and let them get screened for a frequent flyer program, then don't waste time on them. That makes so much sense, Rand. I, I, it, it does sadden me that my country's reached the point that we're going the long way around as far as terrorists at the airport. Also about Obamacare, when you know that most of the people in this country have a system that works, we go all the way around to find the other way and bring You know the government's going to screw that up. Uh, it's just maddening to me that we've gotten this stupid. What, what are your, what's your feeling? Just give me a little vibe on November 6th. Are, uh, do you think that the country's had enough? Well, you would think, and I don't meet anybody really out there who's not worried, who's in business, who's not concerned about what's going to happen. They don't know whether to invest. They don't know whether to, you know, reduce the size of their businesses. And they're concerned about what Obamacare is going to cost them. You know, I know a guy who has a temp agency in Owensboro, and he has 400 employees, but they're temporary workers. He doesn't provide insurance for them. When he has to pay that $2,000 fee for them, it doesn't fit. He's not going to be able to make money, and those temporary workers who are trying to get into the workforce are not going to have that, that ability. I, I worry about all the people who will lose their private insurance and go on to Medicaid, which then the repercussions to that are that it's going to bankrupt state budgets and local hospitals when everybody's on Medicaid. I, I think the disaster here has really, if anything, been understated. Yeah, a nation of flukes. Uh, Rand Paul is our guest, Republican Senator of Kentucky, author of a fascinating book, Government Bullies. And if you want to follow Senator Paul on Twitter, you can at Sen, S-E-N, Rand Paul. You know, one of my favorite callers and listeners is a Canadian named Gord Talk, and he sent in a question that I promised him I'd ask you here, Senator. It says, um, what he thinks of the GOP putting a commitment to audit the Fed on its platform, something that his dad has long been insisting on. Well, you know, we're excited by it. I'm even more excited, though, to try to get a vote on it. It, it passed in the House recently with every Republican and 100 Democrats. Uh, I can't get a vote right now. I've been trying. I've talked to Harry Reid twice about this. 
And Harry Reid has historically always been in favor of audit the Fed. We have him on video, and we've supplied the video for him. In uh, 1995, he spoke for about 10 minutes on it and said he's always been for it. But then in 2010, when he ran against Sharon Angle, he was once again for auditing the Fed. And if we could just get a vote, I think we could pass it. Well, that, I, 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 you want me to tell you how true that is? He won't give you the vote. <laughs> that's, yeah. In Harry Reid a leagues, if I am to invent a language, that's him saying you'd probably win. Uh, at the end here, I just want to say that this is, uh, this is across both parties, folks. And uh, Rand has made this comment, which I heartily agree with. Republicans must acknowledge that not every dollar spent on the military is necessary or well spent. I would change from the military where I do believe every dollar that goes to those boys and girls is well spent, but the Defense Department, yeah, I would think there's some uh, stuff there that can be cut away. And Democrats must admit that domestic welfare and entitlements must be reformed. That's our starting point, Rand. We don't get to that. We never even get off the pad, right? Although and that's I... ultimately the compromise. Uh, both will have to look at their sacred cows. And you're right. It's not about the men and women in uniform. It is about, though, believing that we should at the very least audit the Pentagon. I mean, that's we're going to go from audit the Fed, which I'm all in favor of, to audit the Pentagon next. And um, many Republicans support this, but we got to push it through because it's been going 20 years. People have been talking about it, and the Pentagon keeps saying, oh, maybe next decade we'll try to do it. Well, all I can tell you is I've been on the air for five and a half years. I've never heard one of our soldiers who came back from either giving a physical part of themselves or all of them a mental part of themselves to this country whine one-tenth as much as that 31-year-old shrieking heron and fluke does about her... Uh, uh, about her birth control. For God's sakes, what a world gone mad when she's the whiner, and half these soldiers I talked to have never said anything to anybody over the years and have, uh, you know, faced maddening odds in getting what is due them in my eyes. All right, Rand Paul, Republican Senator, Kentucky author of Government Bullies. Nice to talk to you, Rand. Thanks, Dennis. Bye bye. Yeah, it's crazy the people who whine and the people who don't whine. And we get people on this show calling.